blue striping from the original image uh, that was an artifact of the, uh, of the CCD chip. Uh, that's not a scientifically legitimate way to uh, remove striping because it removes all the detail in an image. For example, from Adobe Photoshop, we see this description of what a high-pass filter does to an image. Uh, emphasizes uh, uh, edge details. The important thing is uh, suppresses the rest of the image. The filter removes low-frequency detail in an image. It's used for extracting line art and large black and white areas from scanned images. When we go back to the actual image, um, the actual image was taken at a rather oblique angle under extremely unfavorable lighting conditions. Uh, but because we have the older images from a different angle, we can triangulate. And computer uh, processing programs are very good now at giving, reproducing lighting from any angle. So we can use those computer techniques with the actual data. Um, and this is done by a computer, not by an artist. There is no introduction of new data in this image by any artist. It is just rearranging the features you see by computer instructions to restore a, a high angle of lighting, uh, put the shadows in the right place, and to restore an overhead view from this oblique view to one side. And here's what happens when we do that. There's the lighting restored, and now we rotate to a view from above. And this is what the uh, object actually looks like, as best we can tell at this point. Um, so both uh, the uh, other scientific arguments uh, and the new view uh, of the face uh, certainly have our attention with regard to perspective artificiality of this object, but there is more. In this image, to the amazement of everyone, uh, in, including the scientists uh, involved who made these predictions, we can see two nostrils at the end of the nose. We can see uh, an iris inside the eye socket. We can see an eyebrow feature over the eye socket. We can see that the mouth does consist of parted lips. Uh, all of those predictions uh, that were made in advance to distinguish artificial from natural were fulfilled in favor of an artificial or built object in this image. Moreover, they are fulfilled in a most interesting way because there is no background of similar features from which we can pick and choose the ones that fit our preconception of a face. So when all is said and done, um, this a priori principle that I mentioned uh, allows us to calculate the odds, uh, the calculated odds of the face itself being found by chance only apply to the next instance, not to the one already found. Uh, that can be a face in clouds effect, however improbable it is. But the predictions that were made in advance are referring to the next instance. And in that case, we have uh, the prediction of these secondary facial features, their size, their shape, their location, their orientation. There's a probability to each of them. The fact that uh, each of these things were fulfilled individually ranging with probabilities from 1 in 10 to 1 in 10,000, uh, and that all the features showed up and that they have the right size, shape, location, and orientation gives us uh, very large combined odds against chance. Um, and uh, the fact that there is no background of similar features means that the, um, the calculations are statistically significant to a scientist. The combined odds uh, of this feature arising as a product of nature uh, or, uh, or the chance origin hypothesis are a thousand billion billion to one. Uh, the artificiality of Cydonia is therefore established beyond a reasonable, reasonable doubt, the Cydonia face. This is now the second uh, face image, not the, not the Cydonia one. Uh, this is at a, uh, another location on Mars near the famous dark marty, marking Sirtis Major. Uh, it's located about a quarter away around the planet from Cydonia. Um, the uh, coloration is always uh, artist's addition to the original image uh, shown here. Don't let that uh, detract from the or original image shown on the left. We don't know too much directly until we explore and get some ground truth here uh, about the origin or the demise of the, of the hypothetical uh, civilization here. 
But we do know, uh, and this is standard uh, science that is accepted by, uh, by all the planetary geologists, that Mars at some point suffered a, a horrendous cataclysm. Uh, now, as to what, that, uh, what the nature of that cataclysm was, that's where opinions divide. Uh, I think there is evidence that Mars was at one time a moon of a larger planet that exploded in the not all that distant past, millions rather than billions of years ago. Or will there be a continued effort even though? Well, there are 67,000 images already in the queue and tens of thousands more uh, coming down the pike. Uh, we want to see what's there, uh, don't you?